This is the skin, very minimalistic. You can open the menu, the presets. The skin settings window is divided into the general settings, which are not changed uh, when you load different themes. You can browse them easily. You can select the element you want to change from this drop-down menu. For example, you want to change body background. You click on the color. Or you can click right here on the element itself. Hey guys, Ilya here. As you may know, I'm a big fan of the plugin script by Bluecat Audio. This is a really fantastic plugin that opens up huge, really huge possibilities for us uh, developers. When I first started using plugin script, I was really impressed with the possibilities, but then I was trying to do things better and I met some things that are difficult to change in the default skin. Let me tell you what I think can be improved about the default skin. Background color. There are different colors that you can choose from, but all these colors are really just a bunch of images inside the modern theme decorations folder. If you want to change the color, you have to open the Photoshop or GIMP or whatever you have and change all these little PNG files, which is a bit tedious and a bit boring. Another thing uh, which could be improved is this reload button. It's too small, you use it all the time and you have to keep the editor pane open. In my first experiments I made the title work like the reload button. It's easy to do if you edit the default XML file then you can just hide this edit area and save some screen space. When you do the plugin export, there are not many options which you can choose from. For example, I don't need all the plugin formats built all the time. Most of the files that are copied with the skin are not used at all, so you get almost 20 megabytes of skin files building 10 plugins each time it takes a lot of time and you get more than 300 megabytes of data. It would be cool if we could change the logo on the toolbar, making a link to your site, whatever. You want your plugin to look like it's your own. Probably you want to change the toolbar. Maybe make it a thinner, make it one line, make it different buttons here, only the buttons you really use. Wouldn't it be cool if we could make this status bar show up only when we need it? I think this would look a bit more professional. An option to change the background would be nice, so that we can use the whole area for our image. By the way, when you write your own KUML, which is the part of the skin that is displayed here in center, you cannot use external images. You cannot. Uh, refer to ex external scripts because there is no variable inside the KUML that contains the path to the current folder where the script and KUML file is. We are limited to only one file, only one KUML file. We have to keep all the scripts inside of it. We cannot link any images, as I said. Speaking about external images, you want your own knobs sometimes. When you do your own plugin, you want to change the knobs. And as I said, you cannot add them inside your KUML. Maybe you want to try some different knobs that are in the manual. Then you have to go to the manual. There are some names in the manual that you can try. For example, you can try this knob. Let's change it. Reload. Okay, we have golden knobs. Then we can try maybe different chicken knob. But if you want to quickly try out different knobs, you have to go through all these knobs, try them one by one, see how they look. I wish there was a quicker way to see all the knobs that we have. Okay, so the good news are that Bluecat Audio is really a great developer. It doesn't limit our possibilities. It tries to give us as much as it is possible and we can do our own skin. This is great. Rewrite everything from scratch and make our skin look 
exactly the way we want it. So I started my own skin uh, from this very simple hello world example. As you can see here the DSP parameter is used. How do you know the names of these parameters? Some of them are mentioned in the manual, some of them you can find here and there. To have the list of all the available parameters, actions, etc. I made the debug skin that is also included in the package. Here you can see which variables are available for you. You can just click and copy. If you develop your own skin, this is really, really, really useful and convenient. You can see everything that is available inside your KUML. Probably the most important part of the default skin is this mapping file and mapping utilities. You have to understand how the parameters that are received from the DSP are really mapped to the GUI, have names like DSP input 0, input 1, etc. And they are mapped into these custom parameters, like the parameters we use in KUML, custom param 0, 1, 2, etc. As you see, the input uh, parameter really has a generic value from 0 to 100% and it is mapped into the value you write in your DSP, script, etc. Here you can also see all output strings, you can see their names, you can try different actions, you can try different action types, for example, open directory action type. You can then copy the action type, open the XML file, find the section type, you see it over here. You can just copy this block of code and use it in your own skin easily. So this debug skin makes life really easy. By the way, you can collapse this informational part right here. To get the skin I want to show you, you have to go to this page and to download your skin files. Here they are. You unpack them into your user skins folder. Users, documents, Bluecat audio, Bluecat plugin script, skins. On Mac, this is also in the documents folder. Right click on your skin and select this skin here. It takes a bit to load. And here you are. You can open the menu, the presets, and this is the zooming. You can click on the title to reload the script or to reload the skin if you click on this side of the title. This is the icon to select the script. If you put your scripts inside your look at plugin script users folder here, you can make symbolic links to your scripts folder. You can organize them very conveniently. For example, this is the fastest way to load different scripts. These are my scripts that I do. These are scripts that I have downloaded from the GitHub, in my examples. And this button shows you the skin menu. You can reload the script here. You can open the script file in your editor, the KUML file in your editor, the script folder. You can also reload the skin so that all the images, etc. are reloaded. And reloading the script only reloads what you write inside your uh, DSP script or inside the KUML, which is much faster than reloading the whole skin. You can edit the skin file, you can open the skin folder, you can also ignore the KUML that you write and use the generic look for the plugin, which also looks quite nice. There are some more options that I will explain to you later. And the option that you will probably use the most is the skin settings. Here you can change the colors, the sizes, etc. The skin settings window is divided into the general settings which are not changed uh, when you load different themes. You can 
browse them easily. You can also save theme if you make your own. If you save your theme inside one of these folders, only one part of the theme will be saved according to the folder you're using. For example, you can load only the meters, try different meters, how they look. Here you can lock different parts of the skin, uh, so when you load the theme they will not change. For example, you like the body, but you want to try different toolbars, etc. And when you load different themes, your body will stay the same. You can select the element you want to change from this drop-down menu. For example, you want to change body background, you click on the color, or you can click right here on the element itself. Body background can be just a flat color, choose any color. You can change the lightness, the saturation, the hue, you can change it slightly, mouse over and use arrow keys on your keyboard and with shift you can go even more precisely. Or you can just click over here and type in some color. This is nice color by the way. <laughs> but you can make this color a bit more interesting if you add a gradient to it. For example, you have the secondary color, make it, let's say, black and choose that you have a gradient from up to down or you can go down up or to center or from center, etc. You can try different variations. Here you can change the color position, light blue to black. You can start the light blue at the top or you can start it in the middle. This is what the current color position means. This is current color opacity. If you change the opacity, you will see the skin color. Skin color is the bottom color that shows up when some other elements have zero opacity. For example, if you make all these elements zero opacity, you will see the skin background. But by default, skin color is not visible. There are some more options that you can try working with gradients. Let's say you have a gradient from center to the sides and you can make it a little different. For example, changing the primary color position makes the primary color wider or narrower and changing the overall gradient shift, you see this little icon here, lets you move the gradient down or up so that you can have it slightly offset. Also you have edges. Edges, they can also have different colors. For example, edge A is slightly lighter, edge B is slightly darker and you get this nice 3D effect. You can hide them, you can make them flat if you change current color position, so use them as maybe dividers. Also you can experiment with how the edges look. You can have them follow the gradient colors or just to be slightly different. They can be vertical or horizontal. So if you make the gradient, let's say from left to right, your edges will be on the left and right sides. But you can change them, make them up down and the gradient from left to right. These are all different options you can try. There is also the shading option, which gives you additional radial gradient. You can change the position of the inner radius and outer radius of your gradient. You can make this a linear gradient as well, left to right, bottom to top gradient, so there are plenty of options to experiment with. You can make secondary and edge colors change automatically when you change the primary color. This is convenient when you want to change only one color and all the other colors follow.
for example I change only the primary color and the secondary color and edges follow this color you can change how darker or lighter they become if you mouse over you can change the value secondary color will be darker or you can change it make it lighter you see the change is immediately here you can also turn them off or if you set the secondary color by hand it is automatically off